Time for this morning's edition of Tillamook Today. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, Maria. And I have Todd and Mike here talking about the Junior Livestock Auction. Because the fair's coming up summertime almost, right? So the fair is the beginning of August. And when is the Junior Livestock Auction? Well, uh, first off, the, the, yeah, the fair is going to be, I believe, the 10th through the 13th. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. And so the auction is going to be on the 12th at 6 p.m. And that's going to mm-hmm. include a barbecue uh, for the buyers who are going to be there to purchase some of these projects oh, the kids fun. have worked real hard on yeah. this summer. So, Yeah. Can yeah. we talk about what the Junior Livestock Auction is, like what the requirements are and what the kids have to go through, and do they get to keep the money? Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. So I'll let Mike talk. <laughs> Mike, Mike Tran here has been involved with the, with the uh, JLAC for a long time. President, for how many years? Uh I don't know, six, seven don't. years. Yeah, he's been. I was going to say, don't age yourself. Yeah, <laughs> he's been involved long enough that he's seen. Although the, everybody probably knows you. Anyway. He uses the story frequently to talk about how he's seen kids come through this, and now he's seeing their kids. Their come kids. Through oh, that's it. fun. So, been involved for a long time, so let Mike talk about JLC. Yeah, um, I guess it's a group that's put put together thirty five years ago. Wow. Um, I think Farm Bureau was part of the starting of it. Uh, I think Bill Goodman was one person, and Larry and Marty Rogers was another uh, couple that was involved with it. But anyway, um, it's we take a group, we have rules where the kids have got to weigh their animals in, mm-hmm. uh, rate a gain, and then we put an auction together at the last to uh, have a show um, and put an uh, auction together Friday night for them. But there's requirements for the kids to participate. They have to be in 4-H or FFA, right? 4-H or FFA. And they have to yes. show their animals. Is that right? Yes, they show mm-hmm. uh, the uh, pigs are on Wednesday night, beef and the sheep are on uh, Thursday night, and the goats are Thursday, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And is it more, is it, there's poultry too, right? Rabbits. Poultry. Yeah. Uh, we've done poultry, rabbits, uh, ducks, turkeys. Wow. So it is kind of fun to walk through the poultry barn or like the small animal barn at the fair when like the poultry and like seeing all the crazy birds and chickens and all those yeah. kinds of things. Right. Right. <laughs> I didn't know that there were chickens that looked like that. Uh, we have a beef weigh in in April for our first beef weigh in. Mm-hmm. And then our major weigh in is uh, was this last weekend, last weekend. And uh, we did uh, 70 uh, members weighed animals. Wow. In. And uh, we did two beef, um, 10 goats, 20 sheep, and uh, 38 swine. Actually, we did 66 swine, but there's kids weigh in extra animals, mm. so their projects will make it. Uh-huh. So that's where we're at this year. And we got an upcoming also, we're going to have poultry weigh-ins where the, the ducks and the sheep, or ducks and the uh, uh, chickens are going to be weighed in. Turkeys. Turkeys. Right, and that's in April, third week in April. Think July twentieth. Uh, July, July right. twentieth. Right. So, so there'll be more kids. Going tri- tri- time traveling. Uh-huh. Yeah. there'll be more kids going to be weighing in more animals. So that's going to be great. That's the more involvement we have in this. That's that's a big thing that lately the JLAC has been really pushing is that mm-hmm. we're trying to get kids involved in 4-H and FFA, and it gets them so many opportunities to learn about life. Everything totally. from from uh, raising an animal to feeding it, you know, to taking care of it, to purchasing it, to mm-hmm. cost of the feed, all the way down to the sale. And you were talking about whether the kids get the money they do. Yeah. Yeah. At the very end, the kids are going to get this animal's going to be sold. Uh, JLAC facilitates the sale and the auction. Mm-hmm. And the kids get to take that money home, so cool. they also get a benefit to – that there's a financial incentive. They understand uh, the finances of uh, raising livestock. But right. Yeah, it's a great deal. Yeah, it's good. I mean, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work for us. Oh, I'm sure. You know. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of kids to manage and animals to kind of help coordinate all right. of that. Well, there's, you know, it's from the very beginning. The kids work really hard. I, I, I have, I, I want to make note that the cost of these projects are increasing every year. Sure. I, what's the average uh, person paying right now for a, a, a market swine project just to get the animal purchased? It's anywhere from two to two hundred and fifty dollars for just the the swine. Mm-hmm. Um, you mean that's the cost of feed and stuff? No, like no, that? that's, no, that's what the they're cost buying. of the animal. Oh, gotcha. Okay, yeah. then you got feed on top of that, right? So, and beef, or I don't know what the kids are paying for beef. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, luckily, mom and dad's got beef at home. They can get one of them. But, uh, you know, the beef is expensive. And it's sure. a long-term project. A lot of the kids with beef have them 
probably starting in October, November mm -hmm. of last year. Yeah. So it's a big project, beef is. Yeah, a lot of responsibility. Right. And mm -hmm. it goes to then the pigs. Pigs are, I think they pick the pigs up in the end of March, for middle of April. Uh, and then that's when the kids, pig kids start their project. So they get them from another farm, usually another, like a farm, right? That has pigs, like, or do they? Yes, they, yeah. they go to auctions and buy them. And uh -huh. there's some, there's a couple families in the uh, community that actually has uh, breed their own. Yes. And the kids bring their, and that's that's the cool part about it. Them mm -hmm. kids that actually breed their own uh, market animals mm -hmm. and bring them and sell them. Yeah. Yeah, I know a couple kids. That, I think the Weehages have their own pigs, don't they? Right. Weehages, yeah. crab trees, mm -hmm. and um, I think there's one more in the county. Yeah, which a that's kind of cool. I mean, for them, they get to see the animal get born and mm -hmm. then raise it and then sell it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, make, how, and okay. make a little money at the same And time. make a little money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are they making their money back though? <laughs> well, they are, and that's what that's that's where the junior livestock auction committee really comes in. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, we we you know we start out you know, when I started uh, becoming a member, I thought it was just going to be helping out with a fair. But holy cow! I mean, you start literally from the end of the fair. We'll start talking Planning about 2017. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's everything from that's trying to find events, trying to find like. auctioneers, trying to yep. facilitate how we're going to get buyers to the auction. Um, how we're going to get checks to the kids and weigh-in dates. Mm -hmm. I mean, you name it, it goes on and get and people on. to help with the weigh-ins yes. and stuff like that. Yeah, help with the fair. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah. yeah. That's do you one, need? So. Do you always need help with the fair? I mean, do you want to put a shout out to well, get some volunteers? We have we have a lot of needs. I don't. Uh, unfortunately, I think the fair. Well, fortunately, I think the fair. We we pretty much uh, through the years, Mike's got a smooth operating um, <laughs> a group of people group that, of people yeah. that yes. really works. The whole entourage. committee works really good together. Mm -hmm. But uh, we do have a couple things that are in the works right now, and mm -hmm. I'd love to talk to them if we got a second about it. So yeah, go ahead. One of the things that um, one of the things that I, we, we spoke about is that kids nowadays they're getting tougher to get them involved in livestock mm -hmm. projects. It's yeah. tougher, you know. We're we're competing with uh, sports nowadays that yep. are year round. If you pick a sport, we're competing with a ton of computer programs, mm -hmm. cell phones, you name it. Family commitments. Yep. And we're trying to get kids involved. So here recently, uh, the Junior Livestock Auction Committee uh, went in cooperation with the Tillamook Shooters Association mm -hmm. on Fraser Road, and we created what we call a land lab. They got a barn out there that is a uh, it's an abandoned barn that um, they have provided an opportunity for us to give kids a chance to raise animals. So if you live in Tillamook um, or any city mm -hmm. um, and you don't have the area to raise, let's say a sheep, or a, you yeah. want to do a, a pig a, a pig project then uh, we now have the opportunity for those kids to do that. That's cool. So I, I really want to get the word out that, you know, 2016, of course, is too late to, right. to get on board. But 2017, but we're going to do a big push for mm -hmm. Tillamook County to get kids that maybe don't know anything about livestock or have done small animal projects mm -hmm. and are interested in doing a bigger animal project, right. an opportunity to raise like a pig or a sheep or a, yeah. a goat. And for that matter, we haven't even – we haven't – we haven't completely said no to the beef, but I think beef's an opportunity out there too. Mm -hmm. And and the Shooters Association has worked worked great with us because they really want to help youth out in the community. That's so. awesome. Yeah, if you're living in city limits, I don't I don't even know if it's legal to have a pig in your backyard. I don't know. I don't know what the regulations are, but even I mean, your backyard's probably not big enough to have a sheep or a goat or whatever. And, and that's what this thing's yeah. all about. That's and, awesome. And so they have. Uh, we've got pins built up up there, and I mean. 4-H and FFA have been instrumental in helping us out on this project because, you know, a lot of people ask, they say JLAC, they kind of, I think they think we're, we represent one group. We don't mm -hmm. represent any group. We're just facilitating the, the, auction. the auction. Right. right. Um, yeah. The animals. For, for the, for mm -hmm. the students of both FFA and 4-H. Right. Right. You know, right. Both are really important and, and both are welcome up at the land lab too. Mm -hmm. So we awesome. have the advisors with FFA uh, on board and we also have uh, the leaders on 4-H to help us out up there. Cool. So. How would somebody get a hold of you? To do well, that, do yeah. Wanna... The biggest thing is that uh, you pro you need to be an FFA or 4-H member sure, to be, have your animal point, up there. Yeah. So the best thing to do is if you're in high school and you're interested in FFA, you get hold of Brooklyn Bush. Mm -hmm. She's the FFA advisor there. Or you, if you want to do 4-H, you go to the Extension Service, right? Which I'll and... here I'll plug their number eight four two three four three three. Perfect. And yep. then talk to Joy down there, and she'll be able to line you up on how to get a, get hold of us and get part of that. Program. That's a really cool opportunity. I really think. so. And I'll say, I mean, I don't have animals now. I have. A, dogs and cats but um i raised sheep when i was in junior high and sixth grade and high school and it was fun 
it was fun, like, to have a little baby lamb. And we had our own, she- like, our sheep actually, our ewes actually gave birth. And then we raised them and took them to fair and auctioned them off. Yep. I don't remember what happened with the money. I'm, I was, like, <laughs> 11 years well, old, so. That's what happens when they give yeah. you the check. It's up to right. you to spend it appropriately. Right. Well, but... I'm wondering if maybe my dad took something with it. I don't well, know. Well, we're hoping that people will put some of that money away right, for yeah. the next year's well, project. Yeah. But I, I know raising <laughs> or kids myself. Or college or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That doesn't happen. Uh, We're going to take a quick break, talk about Tillamook Country Smoker. You're traveling along, enjoying the scenery, and six miles north of Tillamook on Highway 101, there it is, Tillamook Country Smoker, a family-owned business that's been turning out a unique brand of beef jerky for over 40 years. It's juicy, tender, and it's good. Set by their retail store off of Warren Street at Highway 101 in Bay City, they're open 9 to 5, 7 days a week. You're going to find everything, two-foot-long pepperoni, teriyaki, and beef sticks for just a dollar, and excellent summer sausage. There's always something on special. Those one-pound bags of beef jerky are a great buy. Tell them at Country Smoker, if we're going to eat healthy, this is the way to do it. Be sure to visit them online at tcsjerky.com. So we're here with Mike Trent and Todd Hudenpile from the Junior Livestock Auction. So, Mike, you're the, you said you were the president yes. of the auction committee. Right. Yeah, and Todd, how are you involved? What do you do? He's my marketing chairman. <laughs> ah, you always need a marketer. And I, yeah. I get I get hazed at just about every event, so I like to throw that out there. I'm hoping that we get a new member of it eventually here, so I can kind of move up the ranks a little bit. <laughs> nah, Todd's been doing a heck of a job for us, and he's awesome. not going to get away with that. Uh, do you need more committee members, or I don't know how do you how like how are you organized? What's your uh, no we're organization? I we've got a regular president group, sec- of, people. group yeah. group of people, and then. We're on three-year terms, mm, mm-hmm. and if somebody wants off, um, you know, they just say, well, I don't want to do it next year, right? and then we'll have uh, open up for people who want to come in, and mm-hmm. we'll elect somebody to yeah. take his place. But everybody loves it so much, they don't want to leave, right? Uh, yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I got a good group. I mean, excellent group. We all work great together, and uh, I couldn't pull off the auction without them. I mean, it's phenomenal. Group. How many animals are, like, total animals, not in specific species, but about how many get auctioned off every year? Do you know? Uh, Any idea? We did um, 82 lots last year. So I'd wow. say 82 lots of animals. Yeah. And if, are, is I mean, is it open to anybody that wants to come buy an animal? Yes. Or do you, yes. I mean. All they got to do is come Friday night, sign up, uh, get a buyer's number, and um, have a barbecue with us and... Go to the stands and raise their hands. Hitting your pen on the counter, we can hear that in the radio. <laughs> FYI. <laughs> um, so any, anybody could come if you want to, or I mean, it's a big pig. If you want to buy a pig, right? And what do yeah. people do? What do people do with the animals? They butcher them. Uh, yeah, mostly uh, for meat. We have a list of uh, packers that we send. That. Mm-hmm. You can send your animals off to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to right, because you're once you buy it, you're responsible for it, right? Uh, r- right. Well, yeah. no, I take care of that all oh. the way to the packer. Oh wow! Uh, all they got to do is we have a, a organize it, organize it, and yeah. they say they want to go to Tillamook Meat mm-hmm. or Jacob Muller's, and then Sunday morning we get together and and separate the animals out ship them off to the packers and then they're responsible for calling in their cutting wrapping orders sure and paying for it and paying right for it. yeah, yeah. Right. paying for the wraps yeah <laughs> yeah it's not free so, so yeah. we take care of all that right to wow that's the processor awesome. all they gotta do is show up and buy the animal and mm-hmm. we'll take care of it from that buyers are so important i mean yeah. the, we that's one of the things that we're we have we have a very nice barbecue that goes with last year um, we did. We tried something a little bit out of the ordinary. Mm-hmm. We we actually had a barbecue. Tillamook Meats, a big throw out to those yep. guys there. They They're they awesome. do they do great things for the junior livestock auction committee and the fair in general. And they cooked up. Um, let's see what kind of we species of, we had. Sheep. We had some lamb there. We had lamb. We had goat, duck, and, and rabbit. rabbit. And they because yeah. um, you know when people go to the fair and they're going to buy right. an animal, lots of times they show up with a. I'm going to buy a pig. Right. Or I'm going to buy a, a Well, because everybody knows pork and beef. Okay. We all know what we it tastes like. We all taste like, like right. Yeah. So that was the big thing is that we wanted mm-hmm. to try to get that other types of meat mm-hmm. out there so that mm-hmm. people would show up and they'd say, well, maybe I want to buy a pen of three rabbits or mm-hmm. or maybe I want to buy a duck. Mm-hmm. And and these are not the ducks that you that you shoot out of the estuaries or right. up in the bay. <laughs> these are ducks that are fed, grain fed, and, and um, they are they're great table fare. And so right. towing meats did a great job. In fact, I think we had... I think we had one chunk of lamb left, and that was it. Mm-hmm. And we served, I don't know how many plates, over 100 plates of food wow. during the auction. Yeah. So 
really important to get those those buyers to our auction. We want to fill those stands up with them mm-hmm. um, because the more buyers you have, the the higher the prices truly are for sure. the kids. Sure. And um, that's the whole thing. This this is not about anything else other than those kids mm-hmm. out there. They've worked really hard all summer on projects. They've maybe spent a tremendous the year. amount. Yes, and yeah. maybe throughout the year, and they spent a lot of money. And we want them to to get some benefits, maybe make some money, but also recoup at least what yeah. they put into it. Right, right. With the cost. Well, of and as a buyer, I'm. I mean, getting. Getting some meat where you know where it came from, you can actually. If can they talk to the kids? Oh, about absolutely. It? Yeah. So you know, find out what it's been fed and where it was raised, and I mean, you can't get more local grown than that. You yeah. know, and that's a huge push right now. Everybody wants to know where their food comes from. Well, here you go, perfect opportunity. That's absolutely right. And is it tax deductible? Uh, the purchase. Uh, um, you can write it off as advertisement. There you go. Yeah. So, there's a little plug for somebody. Yeah. Yes, if you want right. to try that loophole, yeah. have at it. <laughs> and, and if they walk through the fair before the auction, uh, the kids all got signs, uh, cards up in the above pens the animals. And, yeah. that, uh, the are ones in, that are going. Into the auction. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the kids are more than willing to stop and talk to you. Yeah. I remember being in 4-H and having to live in the 4-H barn. Yes. Well, that's yeah. actually probably was a good time. Oh, yeah. Remember it was back, super remember, fun. Remember back in the days yeah. when we all were 4-H or FFA, yeah. and, and those are things we lived for yeah. was the fair. It was a Yeah, you lived, time. literally lived at the fair for, I think ours, I feel like ours was a week. I don't know. I, again, I was 11. I don't remember it very well. Well, back to the, back to the buyer real quick, though. Mm-hmm. Those, those students in 4-H or FFA members should be going out here very shortly a lot of businesses should start seeing them showing up and soliciting them to come to the to the fair oh okay and so it isn't just the livestock auctions committee's responsibility kids should be going out marketing their own product because that's part of the whole thing too you know and those that put the time in to try to find buyers generally will get better prices for Mm -hmm. their animal Mm because they have more people competing for that right right you know so that's really important so they go out and talk about the animals that they've raised and they, kind of they, what its yes, current situation they, is. And they should be walking around. Don't you want to buy hit, my pig? Yes, hitting the, mm-hmm. hitting the businesses maybe with a picture of the pig right. or the lamb or the mm-hmm. goat and mm-hmm. wanting people to purchase them. And and um, that's great because that brings people there. And that and the barbecue, that's going to be there like Mike was just saying, that all you got to do is sign up as a buyer, and we're going to have a barbecue and come up and, and bid on some of those animals. So yeah. awesome. it's a lot of fun. We, yeah. we It's a great environment. Yeah, and we we have incentive for um, people who buy Grand Champion animals. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you buy the Grand Champion beef, you'll get a free nights or a weekend um, beach house in Manzanita. Oh, cool! And then uh, Ooh, yeah, everything else is free, cutting and wrapping. Um, uh-huh. Matt at Tillamook Meat does the sheep and the goat. He did last year, yep. and then Jacob Mullins doing uh, the pig this year. Mm-hmm. And then the junior livestock pays for the poultry Beef. and oh. and uh, the rabbits, mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. turkey. We which, pay for all the grand go champions. Go to yeah. Mineral Springs. Mineral yeah. Springs with that. Yeah, yeah. nice. So, yeah. The beef is just a weekend uh, house. Mm-hmm. They have to pay for their own cutting and rabbits. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of meat. And, and uh, the few the animals that went through looked really good this week. Yeah, yeah cool. That, so yeah, well, and. Uh, just so that we can recap that in case someone's wondering, Grand Champion, what are you talking about? Because they are 4-H or FFA, they have to show them, right? right? Correct. So they, they're shown in all the little competitions, and then at the end, on what day? Friday? Yeah, Friday the 12th. Right. August 12th at 6 o'clock is... So does the auction start at 6 and the barbecue's before, or does yes. the barbecue start at 6 and then the auction's after? The auction starts at 6. Mm-hmm. The barbecue's, what, 5? About 5 o'clock five, we roll yeah. that the barbecue out, and, and uh, generally we start to see buyers showing up about 5, and they start getting their numbers. Yeah. And when, when Mike was talking about, he really, it's a really a well-oiled machine because everybody has their job there at the fair. Mm-hmm. The, there's no holdups. People show up. Everybody knows what forms need to be filled out. Nice. And the buyer shows up, signs up, gets, mm-hmm. his, gets his or her number number and they walk in they get their food they sit down on the on the bleachers they have a good meal and then all of a sudden the animals start rolling through so yeah. it's really smooth it's a smooth deal that goes where on. is the auction held it's not in the grandstands right because no, it's in the new the pavilion new pavilion oh, there. Right, gotcha. right, right yeah cool so all right we're gonna take a quick break and talk about tillamook motor company Welcome to the more human side of engineering, the Lincoln MKZ hybrid efficiency in its most elegant form. Enjoy the luxury of power. The shared features between the MKZ hybrid and its gas counterpart go well beyond the exterior. Designers and engineers work hand in hand to deliver a hybrid powertrain while keeping a look of a distinction. 
Whether you're in the market for a new car or something pre-owned, it's nice to know who you're doing business with. The Tillamook Motor Company is on the friendly corners of 5th and 7th on Main in downtown Tillamook, and they have your next vehicle. You get their bottom line, one price, without having to haggle, and it includes Ford Protect Premium Care Extended Service Plan for two years or 24,000 miles. Take a test drive today at Tillamook Motor Company, a better place to do business. All right, we're here talking with Mike and Todd about the Junior Livestock Auction, also called JLAC, right? Right, correct. Yeah. Um, So the fair is the 10th through the 13th, and the auction is on the 12th. Um, was there something else, Todd, that you wanted to oh, talk yeah. about? You wanted yeah, to mention? Yeah, okay. Forgetting All right, go that. ahead. Because <laughs> yeah. we oh, got about eight minutes. Okay, so. <laughs> How big, fast can you talk? I, I could talk real fast. Okay. One of the things that uh, <laughs> we do want to put a plug out there is that uh, we have a, we have a couple a couple things. We're always looking for sponsors. And sponsorship can come in a di- couple different forms. One is is that somebody can sponsor with just a uh, trying just giving money that would fund, whether it be the barbecue at the auction, whether it be helping out with the auction. Mm-hmm. Or um, we have a, the ability that people can donate money to go towards purchasing animals for the kids. Mm. Correct, Mike? Right. And the, another one that's really beneficial to the businesses is our sign program. And if anybody's been into the pavilion down there, they see these big signs up directly behind where the auction takes place. Mm-hmm. Four by f- four. by four. Four by four signs with your business logo on it. And uh, the cost of those are five hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Now you think five hundred dollars—that's quite a bit of money. Tax deductible as advertisement, and it stays up for three years. And one of the stories—can um, you share the story about the local uh, paper or somebody took a photograph during oh, one of the rodeo events? These oh, are up. Sure. These are up year round. They don't. So get whatever taken is down. happening in whatever's there. Whatever's happening, whether right. it's a rodeo, whether it's one of the many um, horse events that right. take place in that pavilion. Right. Your advertising is taking place right yeah. there. Yeah. It was. Uh, Actually, I think the, isn't the like the home and garden show in there, or not the home and garden show the master gardeners is that where that do they hold that in there I don't know that, I don't know there's a there's a variety of events. yeah there's so, a I ton mean, of events stays, that happen stays in busy there. Yes. yeah anyway sorry the, go ahead. the when they had bulls and barrels bulls and mm-hmm. at the beaches or yeah. whatever mm-hmm. that was yeah it was uh, one of the guys got a sign he says every time a bull bucked it was on Facebook. My sign was in the picture because <laughs> <laughs> that's the best advertisement that yeah, I could totally. have got yeah totally uh-huh. yeah. And, and so if, if that is of an interest to somebody, those we're always trying to uh, find people that want to put signs up up mm-hmm. there. Now, that money, you think, that money goes directly back to the kids. And I'll let Mike explain how, how we use that money. Yeah, the first $500 is we pay for the sign. Mm-hmm. So then we split it in three years, the rest of it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then that money every year is split in thirds. We help support the lower end of the auction kids. Mm-hmm. And we bumped the prices in their animals. Gotcha. So I think last year we only had to bump one pig since pig That's prices nice. were really high. So yeah. the sheep and the goats, the rabbits, chickens usually bring pretty good money. Mm-hmm. So we help the lower end of the kids uh, make some more money that way. Nice. That's nice for them. And it's about, and it looks, it becomes right. really fair for those kids that right. have worked just as hard for their projects sure. and maybe didn't get the money that. That somebody else did, so we were right. able to bump those prices right. up a little bit to make nice. them feel good. And so they also another thing that we're working on is um, is that we we realized after putting together this land lab for the students that mm-hmm. one of the biggest obstacles that we're running into is the cost of the animal. We just talked about how much it costs for, to buy a swine project. Right, goats are one seventy five to two hundred bucks. Wow. Um, you're talking about Spend lambs are going one hundred and fifty to two hundred, and that's before you even buy feed. And, right. and those are really cost prohibitive. Now, land lab fees out there, just because we we have to pay back some of the electricity we're using, mm-hmm. it's twenty dollars per year per animal, mm-hmm. which is which is really we think is really reasonable. But the cost of the animals are increasing every year, and the cost of feeding them. So, right. what we're trying to do is we're trying to get together a funding source that's going to be stable that kids could maybe apply for. Mm. Um, that let's say that I don't have, my family can't afford 200 or let's say it's going to cost me $400 for the project. Right. We want them to be able to go someplace to apply for that money. And then whether it be the JLAC or we work through the FFA alumni or one of those organizations, they fund it with the anticipation that JLAC will pay them back, whether that's at the end of the year at the sale. We, we have worked out the details, right, but we're right. really anxious to hear anybody's ideas on this or anybody that's built, willing to help us out on supporting mm-hmm. this idea. Because I really think providing the location is key, but kids don't. There's lots. There's a lot of people in the community that can't afford this. Right. And right. what a great opportunity for them to learn 
So I, I think it's money well spent, and that kind of that kind of program would be self funding because really once you once you get the funds into the let's say the bank account, the money keeps getting repaid every year. So it doesn't yeah. you aren't losing money, and you're not money's not going out and having to solicit more money in the right, long right. run. Right, so. right. Well, and let's real quick recap. The Land Lab is. Uh, a farm, right? A farm-ish, a barn. Yeah, it's a barn. A, a piece of land yeah, where of land. kids who maybe don't have the opportunity because they don't have their own land to raise an right, animal can correct. have their yeah. animal out there and mm-hmm. raise it, just in case somebody missed that. In right, the and then and then and then our idea is this next year we're pushing the land lab, but also finding a funding source that would allow these kids to apply for some some grant money, yeah. so to speak, to yeah. either fund the project or help fund the project. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not mm-hmm. saying that. We want the whole project to be paid for because kids learn a lot more when money comes, right. a certain amount of money comes out of their pockets. Right. But there's just getting that animal bought is really cost prohibitive because people mm-hmm. can't come up with that kind of money sometimes. Yeah, that's, so, I didn't realize they were that much money. Yeah. Animals and feed is expensive. Yeah, the feed I know is expensive, but I, I didn't realize animals cost that much. I mean, $175, $200 for a goat? Right. No yeah, deal. I mean it's so yeah, it's cost a lot of money, and mm-hmm. this is in, in these kids are this is such an important thing for the kids. Yeah. I really think it's. I mean, it teaches so many things about life, just economics and life cycles, and how you know how where your well, food how, comes yeah, that's from. Exactly right. How does the meat get onto the table? Yeah, and uh, you can do it by you know all these animals that are auctioned off or are raised humanely, treated mm-hmm. better than most of us treat ourselves or our mm-hmm. children. You know. Mm-hmm. They're checked on by their 4-H and FFA advisors. And uh, one of the things for the barbecue, which is really neat, is that we actually, we're going to, we have a FFA student who's raising the barbecue uh, pigs that are going to be uh, barbecued off at the at the auction. So it's kind of a neat little spur to this yeah. whole thing is that yeah. um, she, she has a project up at the land lab. Uh-huh. She's taking care of the pigs that are going to be um, at the auction barbecue. And I think that's really neat because um, she's she's taking advantage of the land lab opportunities, but she's also helping us out mm-hmm, at the same time. Mm-hmm. So we aren't having to go out and purchase those la- those yeah, uh, pigs, sure. but still costing us quite a bit of money. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. sure. Yeah, uh, we got about a minute left. Was there anything else you wanted to? Well, just say? I want to get everybody down to the fair. Yeah, I was going to. Fair is going to be fun this year. Yep. If you look at uh, go on the uh, Tillamook County Fair's webpage, they have great entertainment. But I really want everybody to come through the pavilion and the pig barns and the poultry yep. barns and take a look at what these kids have been doing and get down there at this uh the auction and if you've never if you've never seen the auction stop by and see it i mean it's yeah. it's a it's a neat thing and mm-hmm. and uh this committee that that mike's president of is working hard and and he's got a well-oiled oiled machine so yep yeah. i know the fair's going to be here before we know it it's uh august 10th through the 13th and the auction is the 12th at six o'clock right august 12th yes yep. yes it is um and if the fair's website, by the way, is tillamookfair.com. And if you have any other questions, you can contact the OSU Extension I office. should throw that out. Yes. So if you if you want to fund or you want to have um, opportunities to help these kids out, whether it be with a barbecue or be with a sign program, the easiest way is to get hold of the Extension office and ask for either Mike or myself. Mm-hmm. And- Their phone number is 842-3433. <clears throat> or you can visit them there on the corner of 4th and... Laurel? I think it's 4th and Laurel. I think so. Yeah, down, downtown. Sounds right, good, yeah. Right yeah. on the block, right the across from uh, La Mexicana. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, we are out of time. Let's see, tomorrow, School District Superintendent Randy Shield will be here to celebrate the end of the school year, because tomorrow's the last day of school for Tillamook. Uh, don't forget Senior Meals, 1130 at St. Mary's by the Sea in Rockaway Beach every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Also noon every weekday at the Cuyahwanda Community Center in Pacific City. Cost is $3 for seniors and six seventy five for everyone else. June 9th, TBCC students are going to present a new exhibit at Bay Ocean, on Bay Ocean Park. The student-curated exhibit includes photographs, artifacts, and unique stories that will be on display at the TBCC Library through August. Uh, from 5 to 7.30, guest speakers will talk about the history and ecology of the park and the future of Bay Ocean Spit. So that's all tomorrow. Uh, June 10th is the deadline for June Dairy Parade applications. You can pick one up at the Chamber office or at, the Til- or at tillamookchamber.com. The parade is held June 25th, and entry to the parade is free. Um, let's see. Uh, it's also the deadline for the Tillamook County Rodeo Queen pageant applications. You can get the application at tillamookrodeo.com. And on Saturday, June 11th, South County Library Club is meeting from 10 to 1130 at the Winkleman Library in Pacific City. There's a special presentation called Cape Lookout State Park, a treasure in our own backyard. Public is welcome. Happy birthday to Ed Seeger. And uh, thank you, gentlemen, for coming in. I learned so much about the Junior Livestock Auction. All right. Bye-bye.